So my name is Dan Dimitar. I'm a security researcher, part of GREAT, um, global, um, global research analysis team, and uh, I do some research about um, IoT, Honeypots and IoT model. In the past two years now, we've been seeing uh, trends of attackers going for um, easy targets, uh, that is routers that are um, almost not at all protected or um, lacking uh, sufficient security. Um, they, um, in terms of like types of devices that are being um, that are being affected, we see any kind of any kind of devices from uh, DVR cameras, routers, uh, even uh, quite some well-known uh, types of uh, well-known vendors. And um, unfortunately, there are some cases with some uh, um, big vendors who are not so fast in. Um, fixing their uh, vulnerabilities. Also, another trend that we've seen is that um, attackers now go after a, a lot of volume rather than quantity. So they don't care if they infect um, a really um, small camera with a really slow connection. It's okay for them because if they manage to infect like 10,000 devices or 100,000 devices, uh, they're gonna get like um, pretty good um, uh, pretty good connections, uh, connection speeds for them to be able to launch a DDoS attack, for example. Um, a trend that we've been seeing lately is that um, attackers now, instead of um, infecting um, devices with the aim of uh, launching DDoS attacks, mostly we've um, called them uh, DDoS as a service, they instead, uh, they tried to infect devices and use them as proxies. And like one of the easiest way or um, one method that you can use a device as a proxy is to um, add it to a um, click, uh, click, add, add click campaign. Basically, um, they have websites where they display ads from Google, Facebook, um, Amazon, Yahoo, Amazon, no, but Yahoo. Uh, they display ads and um, they infect the routers or the IoT devices in people's homes um, in order to proxy requests to mimic real user clicks. And um, this is um, quite successful, mostly because they have like a, a lot of uh, IP addresses they can use. And also they um, improve their, their techniques in order not to be discovered by uh, Google's algorithms, for example. Uh, that is because Google, if it detects um, um, like um, weird traffic or like um, detects automated traffic clicking on your ads, it, they might uh, cut your campaign or they might not give you the money because, um, because of the, uh, the traffic was not organic or was not generated by real users. Well, infecting devices uh, helps a lot because the IP addresses are actually um, located in people's homes. So if you mimic the location, uh, the geolocation of the user, you can actually uh, be successful in clicking on your own ads and thus uh, generating um, a quite uh, good revenue of money. So apart from the ad fraud and the click um, and the DDoS services that are like still popular. Um, some of the latest trends are also mining uh, crypt cryptocurrencies on these devices. Of course, in my opinion, this is not so um, efficient, mostly due to the fact that these devices don't have specialized hardware or powerful, uh, powerful processors to be able to mine a success. Um, um, like quite consistent uh, amount of cryptocurrencies, but you know, even if you earn like two cents per hour or zero per, zero point one cent per hour, if you have a lot of devices like one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand devices, that's still quite a lot of money you earn by basically like scanning for vulnerable devices and infecting them. I think um, I, internet service providers. Um, have a big role into, um, in this problem and this is because they carry, uh, the, they basically, um, they are the ones that connect 
those devices, uh, vulnerable devices, with the internet. And of course, um, an ISP should not be allowed to block traffic or to monitor on user traffic, um, but they might have some uh, options to protect users who are unwillingly uh, connect vulnerable devices to the internet directly. So one way they can protect is they can monitor attacks against their networks and they can block the attackers at the, at the router, at the border um, uh, region. And um, we've been co cooperating with some uh, ISP, um, ISP ven like vendors or um, providers which and basically um, we deploy honeypots in their network um, using their um, free IP addresses. So basically there's now no user traffic um, uh, involved at all. And basically using these honeypots, they, uh, they are able to detect or they are able to identify whenever there's a new wave of attacks against um, their clients. Um, of course, this is just um, a remedy for the problem that users connect vulnerable devices to the internet. But unfortunately, sometimes users don't know that their devices is vulnerable. And this is another side of the story. Um, companies uh, or like vendors uh, that um, produce IoT devices should be held responsible if they don't patch the devices or if they don't uh, if they don't act fast because you know like nobody writes perfect software vulnerabilities might exist but it's your responsibility as a vendor as a producer like to sorry as a vendor it's your responsibility to actually um, fix and, and uh, patch your devices as fast as possible, as soon as possible. And actually, uh, the European Union, um, since I'm part of Europe, I, I live in Europe, the European Union um, is putting forward um, a legislation forcing, if, uh, forcing uh, vendors to patch their devices. Of course, um, on the other side of the story, users should not deploy or should not put vulnerable devices uh, publicly available um, directly, directly connected to the internet or they shouldn't um, put devices, vulnerable devices in their networks at all. Uh, of course, uh, some users might not know that, that their devices are um, vulnerable and I think vendors should be the ones responsible of uh, making sure that they release updates in time or they update their devices whenever there's a new vulnerability being released or exploited in the wild. So our recommendation would be like if you are if you are um, if you are a, like a concerned city was concerned a person and you say okay I would like to buy an IoT device um, like maybe to monitor my uh, ca my apartment is this like secure or not like uh, w will I be vulnerable to attacks my like our suggestion would be first of all document document like do a Google search like model brand name model vulnerability try to see if there were any vulnerabilities discovered in the past. Of course, this doesn't mean that there might not be discovered in the future. Uh, secondly, check to see if the vendor is responsible enough to uh, fix the vulnerabilities fast enough. You'll see researchers like uh, myself or my colleagues who um, sometimes will, will write blog posts saying that, you know, we disclosed this vulnerability and the vendor promptly uh, fixed it and the vendor was like cooperating with us. Try to aim for these vendors, these kind of vendors. Try not to buy the cheapest product on the market because sometimes in order to be able to develop or to bring on the market the, uh, like a product that is so cheap means that you as a vendor you had to cut corners and most of the time security is the first corner that is being cut when they they they, they don't have time they don't have the expertise 
uh, or the budget to invest into developing a secure product. So do your research, try not to buy the cheapest product available and of course even if you know that your device is secure, try to limit uh, its exposure in the internet. Maybe use a VPN to connect to your house and then to monitor your cameras. Uh, try to um, use um, products, um, solutions that exist to limit the IoT devices exposures on the internet.